Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Agar, and in this video we discuss the basics of branching with Java. Let's review the concept of flow of control. Flow of control is the order in which a program performs its actions. Up until this point, the order has likely been sequential, meaning that you write a series of statements and they're executed one at a time from top to bottom. A branching statement chooses between two or more possible actions. So the flow of control branches into two or more possible directions. Let's see where this might be useful. What if we needed to design an algorithm that given the user's grade displays either the word pass or fail? We don't want both pass and fail to print, so we would need to branch our code so that pass or fail printed. So let's look at a short program that reads in a grade between 0 and 100 and then prints out either pass or fail. For this exercise, let's assume that passing is 70 or above. So here's my Eclipse file. To save time, I've already included the main method, imported the scanner class, created a scanner object, and then prompted the user to enter their grade using the next int method of the scanner class to read in an int from the user again we're going to say that the range here is going to be 0 to 100, and we're going to read this in and store it in int grade. So we want one of two things to happen here. We either want to print out pass, system.out.println pass, or we want to print out fail, system.out.println fail. However, if I leave the statements like this, we can see that both would print out either way. So if I just think it through in English, what I would like to happen is if grade is at least 70, so greater than or equal to 70, I want this line to execute. And otherwise, or else, I want this line to execute. The good thing is Java looks a lot like English here. So I'm going to use the keyword if. And then within parentheses, I put the condition. So if we said grade, was at least 70, so grade greater than or equal to 70, I'm going to print the word pass. And then another keyword is else. I'm going to print the word fail. So again, if we observe this, if my grade, and this is an int, so I can compare it to an int here, if the grade entered is greater than or equal to 70, I want to execute this statement, else execute this one. Let's take a look real quick before we run it at what this actually does to the flow of control. Here's, here's a visual representation of what this statement does to flow of control. So I'm executing statements in normal sequential order here. I reach this if condition and I have to evaluate whether grade is greater than or equal to 70. So evaluate grade greater than or equal to 70. And note that no matter what item I put in here, whether the grade was 50 or 100, right, we're either going to get the value of true or false. If this evaluates to be true, let's say the grade maybe was a 95, then yes, that's greater than or equal to 70. It's going to execute this statement. Otherwise, if the grade was not greater than or equal to 70, let's say the grade was a 65, this statement becomes false and we execute something put in the else clause here. Coming back to our code, let's save and run this. You can see it's wanting me to enter a grade. If I put in 87, we know that that should be greater than or equal to 70, so the word pass should print. And it does, and just to test thoroughly, I'm gonna put in a grade of 65, which is less than 70. So this would evaluate to be false, and then what's listed here in this else clause should print. So push enter, and we see fail print. This is the basic structure of if-else statements, but now let's look at some of the more detailed things that sometimes trip people up. It's really common to use open and close curly braces around the statements that you want to execute if this expression is true. The same thing here, I could nest curly braces around this. What this does is allows us to put multiple statements or compound statements. 
meaning that if my grade was greater than or equal to 70, maybe I print pass and then also have a print line statement here that says great job. Or maybe else I say fail and then say see me in office hours. So let's do this here. I'm going to add a compound statement. And now if I save and run it, let's put in a failing grade, so maybe a 50. We know that it would skip anything in here, come to the else, because again, this is going to be false. It should print fail and see me in office hours. Good. Now, if I were to run this again with 99, it still only prints pass. You can leave these out if you have just a single statement. So this is also still valid. However, if I have multiple statements, I have to use curly braces. Otherwise, it's not going to work the way that we think. Let's take out these curly braces just to illustrate this. So now all I've done is remove the curly braces. So if grade is greater than or equal to 70, print pass, else we want to print out fail and see me in office hours. However, we removed the curly braces so let's see how this works. If I run it with 50, we see both of these items print out. So it appears that it's working correct. But if we thoroughly test our code and run it with a passing grade like 99, we should only see pass print out. But what happens is we see pass and see me in office hours print out. Again, this is a common mistake. We know now that white space doesn't really matter in Java. So here I have this indented, so it looks like it belongs to the else statement, but really it doesn't. If I omit the curly braces, only the first statement here belongs to the else. The same thing here, only the first statement belongs to the if. So this statement actually is going to execute no matter what. Just to make it a little more clear, I'll fix the indentation and so this looks a little bit more clear. This is our if else statement and see me in office hours is going to print either way. Now again, changing the white space did not change the way it functions. This is just a better visual of how the code is actually working. So we like to use white space to show flow of control to show two different branching options there. Again, if I wanted to fix this, I would put curly braces around this and because we don't like to leave it indented in a bad way, I would fix it like this. Similarly, if I had another statement here in my if clause, it would not belong to the if clause, and it would actually break it because then else would be hanging out here by itself. So if I wanted to say system.out.printline, great job. Again, only this line without curly braces belongs to this branch, meaning that even though I have this indented, it's really just here by itself. And now Java says, well, I don't know what this else is attached to. So if you use else, you have to follow it immediately after an if statement. If you have other lines of code in here, this else is just hanging out by itself. And you can see you're going to get an error similar to this. So syntax error on token else delete this token. So we cannot have else without if, because if has our Boolean expression here. This is how we know whether we take the if block, the true, or the else block, false. If we don't have an if statement, then we cannot use an else statement. But we can have an if statement and omit the else statement. So I'm going to delete our else here. And I'm actually going to delete this line of code also. And now what I have is just a program that as long as the user passes, it's going to print pass. If the user fails, we're not printing anything. So if I save this, run it. If I put a 79 in, that's passing, so it prints pass. And if I run this with a 68, then you can see there's no other statements to execute, so nothing executes here. I can also have multiple if statements. So if my grade is greater than or equal to an 85, then maybe I print out excellent. So 
save it, run it. And now we're going to hit both of these if statements. So if I have a grade that is 90, this evaluates to true printing pass, and this evaluates to true printing excellent also. If I run it with 90, we can see both of those happen. But then if I were to run it with, say, 75, this would evaluate true, we'd print pass, but 75 is not greater than or equal to 85, so we skip over this line of code, and there's no other statements to execute here, so the program would terminate. So if I run it with 75, we can see that happen. Just as a review, remember, if you want to include multiple statements in a branch, then close the statements in these curly braces. So here's an example where I'm printing pass and great job if the grade is greater than or equal to 70, and else I'm printing fail and needs improvement. What I advise new programmers to do is just always use curly braces around their if and else blocks, even if there's just one statement inside. This avoids these kind of errors, but you should understand how it works if the curly braces are omitted in case someone tries to trick you on an exam. And last but not least, it made sense to just use the greater than or equal to sign, but I do want to review that Java has several of these comparison operators. Two equal signs compares if two variables are equal to each other. So if we wanted to check if the grade was equal to zero, we would say if grade equals equals zero. If we wanted to check that the grade was not equal to zero, we would replace this equals equals with the not equals. Not is the exclamation point here. And so again, this checks if the grade is not equal to zero. And then we have the standard less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. <clears throat> Note that we can use this with more than just ints. So let's say we were writing a multiple choice quiz, asking the user to enter characters, so char variables, A, B, C, or D. We could write a comparison statement that looks like this. If choice is not D, then do something else. Now, in comparing these, choice would have to be of type char, because D is type char. Just like up here, grade would have to be of type int, just because zero was an int. So as long as the types match on both sides of these comparison operators, this will work. Note that a common mistake is to try to compare something like grade equal to zero with a single equal sign. We cannot use a single equal sign because remember, this is called the assignment operator. If I use the equal sign like this, x equals five, what it does is it assigns the value of five into the variable x. So if I put that expression in an if statement, if x equals 5, we're going to assign the value of 5 to x, and then I'm just left with if 5, right, some variable x that has the value 5. That's not an expression that can evaluate to either true or false, so that's not going to work. That's why we have the comparison operator. We can say if x equals equals 5, this does not perform assignment, assigning 5 to the value of x. It simply compares the two and returns true or false. And last but not least, using the comparison operator to equal signs is appropriate if used with ints or any primitive integer type, shorts, bytes, longs. Also booleans, so true or false expressions can be used here, or chars. So here I've got if a equals 3, if a is an int, this is a valid expression. If b equals false, so if b is of type boolean, so something that evaluates to true or false, this works. Or if c equals equals the character a, as long as c is of type char. So the types that we have not mentioned are things like floating points and strings. So the rule of thumb is you do not use the comparison operators, the two equal signs, to compare floating points, so floats or doubles, strings, or other objects that you might create. We'll learn another way to compare those later on. That's it for the basics of branching video. Thanks for watching.